Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour on Saga 960. I want to introduce you again to Maria L. Masani. She is a haute couture designer. She's a color consultant. And get this, she is a toxic dating coach, the devil's dating coach. She breaks modern taboo, she says, and helps people, women, get what the devil they want and dress for success. Nothing illegal, of course. She helps her clients dress how they want to be addressed and get who they want. She's going to talk a little bit tonight about Justin Trudeau's divorce, which she says she's beginning a lot of questions about, and toxic dating trends. Sounds like an interesting conversation. Maria, welcome to the show. <laughs> how do you do? Very well. So tell me, how did you get into being a toxic dating coach? By pure accident. It was COVID. I'm a haute couture designer. And what occurred was, you know, Arab weddings were gone. So I had to find another line of work. And I am also a stylist and a color consultant. So I was looking for clients and all of them were asking me dating tips and advice. And some of them, frankly, quite toxic. And I thought, you know what? I'll give this a spin. I'll give them dating tips. And in exchange, they'll be my client. And that has worked so far. And you uh, post some of your dating tips on, uh, on Facebook and Instagram on a fairly regular basis. Absolutely. And they're quite controversial, quite toxic. But my clients have been dating, marrying multimillionaires. Some have become mistresses, some sugar dating, all sorts of things. I don't judge what people want. I simply, you know, if you want something, why not get it? Right? It's a free world. And so what do you advise these uh, females? So I advise ladies on social contracts. So that's back to go to Sophie Trudeau and why her marriage didn't work. A lot of ladies do not know what is written in social contract because when we interact with people on a close basis, there is a social contract, right? So if a man says he's a feminist, what does he get out of it, right? Especially now, feminism is not the 1980s, which was the golden age of dating where you didn't need coaches, everything worked, right? Everyone was happy in the 1980s. Everyone was happy in the 1980s. The confusion was not what it is today with, you know, toxic, radical feminists, red pill, and there were some really graboids, like toxic type of sugar dating. There was all sorts of toxicity on every side with the internet. So it's so confusing for people. And it's a zoo. So they ask me, okay, you are like a zookeeper. <laughs> how, do, how do I get what I want? And I explain to them, well, what do you want? Are you aware of the contract? So a male feminist, what does he get out of it? Abdication of responsibility of providing, protecting, cherishing, and general abdication of responsibility. So I said, if you want someone like Justin Trudeau who abdicates his responsibility, then you can have equality in your, you know, dating relationship. My grandfather said there is only free cheese in a mousetrap. And so there was nothing is Sorry, free, right? There's only free cheese in a mouse in a trap. Mouse trap. Nothing is free in this world. So if you want to for a woman if she wants to date someone successful, she cannot, you know, just say, I'm a feminist. You know, I don't have to shave my legs. I don't have to be pleasant. I don't have to cater to him because that is misogyny. Okay, fair enough. Then split the bill with your male feminist who abdicates responsibility. If you want a responsible man, well, you have to provide value for him, you know, and physical relations are cheap anyone can get it and beauty is common these days so you have to provide something aside from being good looking being pleasant being interesting seeing a psychologist so you don't attack people at random and snap over nothing not being emotionally dysregulated you have to provide some value for the person to find you fun to be around sounds and like you have ladies. a very traditional um old-fashioned point of view about relationships? Well, I have a mixed view that if you want an, if you want someone with 
um, if you want a traditional relationship as a housewife, you cannot get there as a feminist. And if you are, want to be a feminist, well, you do understand that he does not have, your partner does not have to commit, he does not have to provide, he doesn't have to protect, and he does not have to take any responsibility. You're both free. My issue is many women want to sit on two chairs. They want to be modern. They want the benefit of traditional dating while being modern. And I just say it doesn't work this way. If you want to be a housewife and ask him to pay your bills, what value do you provide for him to do that? In life, there is a reciprocal exchange of value in business, right? If he wants, you want him to split the bills, well, you have to give your body for free also. Oh, you're free, or you give your body for free. That's great. But then you're not entitled to his income. Why should he give you money for free, right? Many of this, these girls see Russian girls dating someone from Dubai, and her boyfriend gives her a Chanel purse. I say, okay, if you want to design your goodies, you know, your feminist boyfriend who splits the bill, He's just looking for a sperm toilet to pee in on a regular basis because that's what the girlfriend-boyfriend contract has devolved into, sadly, these days among young people. So if you are, you know, confident with you're happy being peed in once a week regularly for someone who gives a commitment that he's not responsible for and split the bill and all this, then good for you. But you cannot, you know, then say, oh, why? What, where's my Chanel purse? <laughs> well, if you want a Chanel purse, that's part of a traditional courtship, right? You know, and you cannot expect it on the first date, you know, you have to appreciate flowers, romance, maybe get engaged, there are stages, right? Or there is sugar dating where you can have, he pays you an allowance, but in exchange, you have to behave traditionally, right? Because if you're, there were, there are these, we call them Lauren uh, SJWS. Lauren SJWS, the anti capitalist sugar babes. So there are these communist sugar babes. I'm serious. Communist <laughs> sugar babes. Yes. And they are especially popular at Ryerson University. And they whine on Tumblr how. You know, they're not very happy in their dating. It's not working. So these communist sugar babes go on a, a date with a capitalist and saying, I talked to him about how masculinity and his work as a stockbroker is utterly toxic. And, you know, he's a misogynist. And he, he decided not to give me an allowance and not to give me a second date. I wonder what's wrong. <laughs> and they're sitting there blogging about it. It's like, you know, if you want to date a Marxist, date a university soy boy with ripped jeans who's broke and sh struggle sharing an apartment with four other people, sharing a room, you know? If you don't like this life, well then, you know, if you want to date a communist, then date a communist, but you can't impose your communist beliefs on a capitalist and wonder why it's not working. Just my philosophy is pick a lane and stick to it. We're going to take a break and come back with an interesting conversation on uh, toxic dating with Maria Al Masani, a hook at your designer, color consultant, and toxic dating coach. Stay with us, everybody. Welcome back, everyone, to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour on Saga 960. My guest tonight is a toxic dating coach, uh, a uh, haute couture designer, a color consultant. Her name is Maria El Masani. Uh, she's quite controversial. Uh, she posts on uh, social media on a fairly frequent basis. She's very critical of a lot of dating trends uh, today and uh, quite, I would have thought, old fashioned uh, and traditional in her in her point of view, but she describes it as sort of more practical. It's kind of interesting. Um, there's a couple of terms that you've used that I'd like to uh, to understand what they are. You you said red pill. What's red pill? Well, if you know Bernier supporters who are on the far right, the young men that feminists like to screw, and then they're saying, oh, I don't do that. And so these are gentlemen want to play the role of a bad boy. 
and but they also have a victim mindset and they're far right and they're always crying and complaining about about you know the mother very often many of them are sons of single mothers they don't have male role models and they're writing usually the most misogynist comments to get a reaction and the far right extremists usually and you call them red pill they call themselves that they call themselves red pill yes why because they say that you know it's from the matrix that the media is well you know they're saying what lenin said the media is not the truth but what whoever pays for it says well that's a leninist view which is very funny because they mix left and right ideas and so uh in the matrix there are there is the protagonist he's asked to take the blue pill of a world of propaganda or he can take the red pill which is the truth and for young men because of the sexualized hypersexualization and the pornography that a 12 year old boy today sees far more naked women in two minutes on Pornhub than Genghis Khan who conquered the world saw in his lifetime so of course this alters young men right how does and it alter young men so it makes young men in a way somewhat it it creates a pressure that they must you know perform that they must deceive a young girl their age into the bedroom and so on it's just really distort the behavior right it creates exaggerated behavior so it makes them what more misogynistic and uh, more exploitive sexually yes because they so the, there is a pressure for them to date at age 12 when they have no resources, right? And with 12-year-old girls who are really foolish, right? At 12 years old, no one's particularly bright. So the 12-year-old girls go for the bad boy. So And that's where the red pill starts, that they feel very angry that their mothers lie to them, that being nice gets them laid. Whereas being a jerk to a large group of girls, they will get laid with the least confident. Oh, now they're a hero in their classroom. They got laid, whoop de doo why, why, do the, why do the young girls want the bad boy? Why do the young girls not want the, the nice guy? Well, you know, it's like with, uh, there is a phenomenon that they mistake authority, right? And competence for being bad. It's just, and it takes a girl to mature right and be a grown-up woman to appreciate a decent man who can provide protect commit so but provide protect commit this is a combination that you know if you're 12 years old you don't have the maturity to impress a young woman legitimately at 12. a 12 year old boy cannot naturally impress a 12 year old girl that's just again a crime against nature you know it's this pressure of early dating and so there you are think there's girls. pressure to date early in our society today, earlier than it uh, was in the past. Well, yeah, yes. And also in the past, you could get married earlier and so on, right? And there is a hypersexualization of young people, and there is a pressure for young people to date before the girls have started to mature. I think, you know, in well, let's say in Russia, in the Middle East as girls grow older, they understand that the bad boy is not who they want to date. But by then you're 16, 18, you know, if you're 18 or you graduate to go to college, you start understanding the bad boy is bad. But when you're really young and immature, you don't know the difference, right? And if he's pressuring you for intimacy, you're thinking, oh, I'll be nice and maybe I'll get a girlfriend i'll get a boyfriend and i'll get status in the school and i'll find love and all of this if it, we didn't have such a prom culture and if we didn't encourage young people to date until they graduate high school i think a lot of the toxic dating would not be there and a lot of the misogyny wouldn't be there is but, this a problem just for teenagers or is this a problem uh, in adulthood as well it is a problem in adulthood that stems from the teenage years because the boys at the formative years, they find that, you know, like look at the Bernier supporters when they were teenagers, 
they tried being a nice boy to get laid and you know you have nothing to offer at 12 years old come on so by being a bad boy they got laid right but they basically it's a numbers game they have to be a bad boy to a large cross section of women and one woman we call a pikmisha pick me or doormat so those women become very interest basically are overly agreeable and think oh if they yield to this misogynist who just wants to not a misogynist it's a young boy who wants social status by peeing in some girl and using her as a sperm toilet and calling this a girlfriend so it's 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 a toxic phenomenon dating too young like that you know but they're doing it for social status in the school and then when he grows up he thinks oh the red pill was that his mother betrayed him his parents betrayed him his teachers betrayed him people don't like good girl i mean good girls they don't like good boys they only want jerks and all this stuff and this really distorts the dating marketplace because my friends go on dates and gentlemen say oh nice boobs are they real nice nails are they real nice hair is it extensions oh your teeth they're rather crooked but i think that's cute and you know the girl ends up crying leaving dates because the gentlemen genuinely think they're going to get laid well she's not 12 right so, so you're saying yeah. that too many men uh in their what 20s 30s etc uh even, even early 40 divorced men will go onto these tiktoks of red pill right and then they're oh this is how i should date and they should and they try it but you know it's always the overweight low self-esteem bottom of the barrel who would go for such misogyny right what's a dusty a dusty is you know a misogynist or just you know a loser who's sitting there the dusties and dustinas that's a term young people use it means someone who has a victim mindset they're always complaining they're not achieving anything and then whenever their friend or their girlfriend or or boyfriend achieve something they attack them out of jealousy and so they always see themselves as a victim and create problems for people and go on and in dating dusties are always usually red pill and they say oh nice nails are they real what do you bring to the table for me to date you nice tits are they real <laughs> you know it's it's such rudeness and many women walk away crying and and this is caused by them being conditioned that uh, being bad, being uh, misogynistic, being insulting, actually got them uh, some action in their teenage years. You're saying, and, yes, and so therefore exactly. they become they become indoctrinated into this red pill scenario and it working. And you're yes. and you're thinking this is very prevalent in in adult males. Um, sadly, with my friends, when they date, they say this is mo most of most of them do this. Most and. Yeah, that's why women, young women now are dating older men because they've just had it. Most young men in their 20s do this. And it's called a neg, these insults, because it, they, you're right. It, it, they're conditioned to get laid by some pick me in high school. And so they try to do this in adulthood, right? And they're indoctrinated and they're invested in it. And so many young women said enough is enough and they're just dating older because they've had it. And they find, you know what, they don't mind even catering to someone older, just they're just sick and tired of being insulted on dates. You, you've got this term, uh, is it hypergamy and hypergamy, hypergamy reaction? Yes, yes there's a, because of these dusties who are their age, who are always insulting women with negs on dates in their 20s many young women say i don't want someone my age so i should date someone older then say what criteria should i judge it by and so that's how this hypergamy or marrying up trend started so they thought you know he should feel confident why is he with me right so maybe he is more successful maybe he's richer and so on so hypergamy is marrying up 
whether financially or status-wise. So quite a few young women have been trying this, and they are saying that they're so much happier, as men over 40 are so much kinder. They open the door, they give you flowers, they're decent people, they don't ask you if your boobs are real on dates, they don't insult you, they actually have a brain, you can have a conversation with them about something other than sports, you know. So they're interesting, they're intelligent, and they're fun. So why date someone who is conditioned and bitter from the red pill, your age, when you can date someone older who's a gentleman? Because you see young women mature. When they're 12, this red pill guy might be very interesting, right? He's a bad boy and sexy. But when you're a grown-up woman, that's the last thing you would want, right? Uh, so, you know, I'm a little bit older than you. And, uh, and you know, we always had this perception when we were teenagers that uh, that too many females liked the bad guy as well. And and when I was growing up in high school, people called me Richie Cunningham because I was the uh, the 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 really good guy. And um, and and hasn't this this attitude that females were attracted to the bad guy been around for forever? Yes, since cave dating, because uh, since the caveman years, because the young women. They mistake, Jordan Peterson talked about it. Young women mistake um, bad boy for authoritarianism for competence when it's actually not. And it takes a woman maturity to understand, you know, and being hurt by a couple bad boys to, oh, he's just a broke, dusty loser who has a, a part time loser. <laughs> yeah, who has a part time job at Starbucks and rolls joints, right? And then, and lives in his mama's basement. And then, you know, why should I tolerate him, you know, making co derogatory comments on my cup size? Why should I do that? When I can go for someone who's kind. And the, the problem is the internet, right? Is that, you know, in the internet days, people bully so much. So, you would have probably, when you were, if you had internet as a teenager, you probably would have been bullied a lot, right? Over being, oh, you're such a simp, right? And then when you become successful and older and the girls are not 13 anymore and they're grown up ladies, right? All of a sudden, you're the popular one, right? Because the, the people who are popular, the cheerleaders, the jocks, who are brainless, who are popular in high school, they're not the ones who are successful and popular in adulthood, right? It's, it reverses. But sadly, social media, you know, uh, really concentrates in a quite toxic way the experience in high school. And then sort of almost in the opposite direction, you're also critical of what you call 50-50 relationships. Uh, and you say that uh, that Justin Trudeau was sort of the ambassador of a 50-50 relationship. Tell me about that, if you could. So it's a relationship where, where women think they have power over false perception of equality, but men abdicate responsibility. So over time, the woman resents the man. And if she's married, it's worse. She has to sleep with him. And she resents sleeping with someone she's no longer sexually attracted to over time. Um, one of my friends, uh, Suha, so she's a coach, she has a lot of clients who are going through divorce, similar to Sophie Trudeau, where they say they just sexually, you know, they, 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 they just, it's like a roommate to them, and he's into her, but she's just, it's very difficult for them, because they feel that He's abdicating responsibility. Well, really, no, you signed that social contract. You are dominant, you're strong, independent, you are a career woman, and you do everything 50 50. Why should you be upset, right? And it's, you know, the thing is, even gay and lesbian couples um, report to me that having polarity or traditional gender roles maintains the sexual spark in the relationship where if it's 50 50 it eventually fizzles into being a roommate but okay on paper you're equal right but in the bedroom you're not happy 
if you're a woman or if you're the feminine gay or if you're the Porsche, if it's Porsche and Porsche, it fizzles. But if it's Ellen and Porsche, one is masculine, one is feminine, those relationships in the gay and lesbian community last the longest and are the most, they're the happiest. This is interesting. So you're, so you're saying that what? Uh, feminism, women's liberation, equality, etc., has actually harmed relationships. Absolutely, because I, it's not. It the thing is, it's everything is good in the beginning, but over time, you know, things that have the road, the path to hell, is laid with good intentions. Right in the beginning, it was wonderful, but people just took it to the extreme. Right, because the. It was very well intentioned, but then it became anti-women. Russians started feminism, and then there was a backlash because it's beautiful on paper, but in person, you have to sleep with someone you're not attracted to. Why aren't you attracted to someone if you're equal with them? Because, uh, you know, it's human sexuality, right? It's very deeply ingrained that the person to be physically attracted to him should be an alpha or the leader or you will be looking to cheat. And there was a study in Sweden that when men became house husbands, that's exactly what women did. They cheated. cheated and left. The only ones where they didn't was he had a home business. So, I mean, that's the studies, that's the scientific data. So you're saying that, uh, that even liberated women, feminist women still need to be feminine in the bedroom or feminine in the relationship? If they want... If they want sexual chemistry, or they can end up like Hillary Clinton and let their man run around in Epstein, Epstein, Epstein Island. You know, you have to accept, like, bio, biology is biology. I mean, if you want equality, allow your husband to run around on Epstein Island and stop complaining. It's pretty tough words, uh, pretty uh, controversial words. I think a lot of people uh, would disagree with you, no? I think they People can disagree all they want, but look at the results I get, right? It's with everything, you cannot go against nature. If you outrun nature, you know, nature will do you in. If you think that gravity is wrong and immoral and unequitable, if you jump off the Eiffel Tower, guess what's going to happen to you? Splat. So what's your recommendation to females? Be feminine? No, my Be recommendation- No. In a traditional relationship, a woman, a man is the head of the family, but the woman is the neck. And the head does not move without the neck. So in traditional relationships, the woman actually has the power, but it's cooperative, right? As opposed to, you know, authoritarian power. So it's about understanding power dynamics. I would recommend women to read Robert Greene, Machiavelli first, and then, of course, the Stoics, Epictetus, um, Marcus Aurelius, and learn power dynamics, that life is like a bar of wet soap. The more you grab onto it, the more it escapes. So know what you're looking for and understand the terms of the social contract. So if you want to be strong and empowered and your career is the most important to you, you, you must accept sacrifices like Hillary Clinton did, right? And if you think, no, for me, relationships is more important, then what's the option for young ladies? Red pill, broke, dusty losers who agree to split the bill or the Trudeau type, we call them soy boys. Soy so they, boys. Soy boys, yes. They, they are the extra nice guys. So um, an example, a friend of mine, she had a male friend who said he's just a friend. And she would take the bus. And each time she'd take the bus, you know, he'd message her, oh, you know, I can drive you. I can drive you. So he became a personal driver. Then she was moving. He helped her move and so on. And did this for a year. At the end of the year, he said, I'll just make up a name. Sonia, I would like a mercy blowjob. And she was shocked. What? I would like a mercy BJ, please. What? I thought we were best friends. We did our nails together. We did pedicures. You drove me everywhere. Yes, I did all that for you. So now I'm an, such a nice guy. Therefore, you're entitled to give me something. So I never asked for you to drive me. I can, I'm a perfectly capable, independent woman. And I have nothing against using public transit. You kept insisting. So I said yes. 
And I did. So it's like the, this fake nice guy. So they, there's always a subtext. So nice guys aren't nice guys. They're fake nice guys. Well, yes, there's the fake. So the genuinely kind gentleman is not the same as the, oh, I'm such a nice guy, right? So the I'm such a nice guy are always saying this because to manipulate, to want something, whereas a genuinely decent, kind gentleman isn't yelling how nice he is. And affluent people don't yell how rich they are. You know, a smart person doesn't yell how smart he is. They just are, right? And this, I am so nice that I owe you, that is a very popular phenomenon among young male feminists. And they want to become a male feminist because right now it's radical ideology where everything is the fault of patriarchy, everything is the fault of men, everything is toxic masculinity. So young men hearing that say, okay, I agree. In exchange, uh, I have no responsibility whatsoever. So that, that's a social contract. If you don't like these terms, like Sophie Trudeau did, you leave. Right? How do you know that's what happened with the Trudeau's relationship? You know, I am not, uh, I don't want to reveal what I'm privy to. I, I don't want to discuss the Trudeau relationship as, you know, I, I want to give them their privacy, but I do want to discuss it as a pop culture phenomenon because he was the ambassador of these relationships that women are now rejecting. These 50-50 relationships women are objecting. So yes. what you're effectively saying is that that men need to be men and women need to be women. Masculine and feminine are different and they they shouldn't be 50-50. Um, females are attracted to the alpha male. Is that what you're saying? Um, yes and no. It's I'm saying that there is freedom, that there is... See, the thing is 50-50 in reality is you know, 80-20. And everything ends up being on the woman as a pack donkey. Because there are studies that show that men who split the income are the least helpful in the household. And the men whose wife is a housewife help the most, which is ridiculous. So the, the problem is that on paper, a lot of these feminist relationships are not the same as in practice. So just be aware of what you want. If you want to have a, to be a strong, independent career woman with a feminine male, you know, let him go to Epstein Island. Epstein Island. <laughs> or if I lost you. Are you there? We seem to have lost Maria. We'll take a quick break and be back with some concluding comments in just two minutes. Stay with us, everybody. Welcome back, everyone, to the Brian Crumby Radio Hour on Saga 960. I'm having an interesting conversation tonight with Maria El Masani. She is a hood couture designer, color consultant, and a toxic dating coach. And she's been um, interesting and provocative uh, in her views. Why do you call yourself the devil's dating coach? Because many people deep down have a secret desire, but they don't want to express it publicly, you see? And publicly... People have a mask and I give people what they want. So that's why people have been calling me the devil. The devil, because you give them what they want. No, because I because I give the their enemies what they want. You know, that they should be it's it's basically the pick me's and the simps, the people who say, Oh, you know, everything should be perfect. How dare she? How dare she teach women to marry up or get what they want, right? And how dare I, I teach gay couples to have better intimate relations? You know, how dare I, right? So, so I find everyone. You're, you're saying you're supportive of marrying up. Um... Ab absolutely, because it's reciprocity, because I do disagree with a woman, just like feminists, catering to someone for free. Like, he will resent you for being a doormat. I agree with a feminist. If he splits the bills, you should not have to shave your legs. If you are bothering, waxing, laser, all these treatments, well, he should pay for it. 
sounds almost transactional. Well, sadly, it is. The young relationships are transactional. It has the sexual revolution devolved, sadly, into this, right? Because what do boys use women for? Sperm toilets, a consistent sperm toilet. And that is being a girlfriend. So what do you do? You get peed on once a week, and then you're saying, okay, I want to get married. Oh, no, no, you know, a marriage is just a piece of paper. And then, oh, you have a kid, they run away. I'm an alpha male. I don't date single mothers. They actually say this, young men. They make a girl a single mother, and they run and say, I'm an alpha male. I don't date single mothers. Or I'm, I'm progressive, and I have important activism for climate change, and it's much more important than adding more human life to the world. Like the, the, the excuses are incredible. And young women have just had being used and taking advantage of. You also have commented that, uh, that age isn't an issue, that people can marry um, older men. Yeah, because older men treat them better than these young indoctrinated either soy boys who abdicate responsibility, which... Justin Trudeau is the image of. So I am talking about him as an avatar rather than what happened. Or you have the Bernie type, right? Not Bernie himself, but his fans, the Bernie bros. This who, is Maxime uh, Bernier of the yes. People's Party of Canada. Yes, yes, yes. So Bernie bros are the ones who go to their dates. Nice boobs, are they real? You know, because if a woman has no self-esteem, there is a chance that she would put out, but grown women, thinking he's a bad boy, but grown women are sick and tired of that garbage. So what, what is a reasonable age difference? Um, as long as, as both parties are fit and happy, because I think it's, it's about being, it's better to have someone older and a few years with him, but him treating you with respect, dignity, and not asking if your cup size or hair color or whatever is real. And just opening the door, bringing flowers, you know, this tr the traditional dating like it was in the 1980s, the men who know that and how to treat a lady are often older. And young men often mainly, mainly know how to be rude. When there is a, a young man who is a gentleman, he's a prize and you have a hundred girls fighting over him. And you also were supportive of uh, of sugar daddies? Well, yes, because you know what? With young women, it's a toxic trend. Many young women, that's what they like. So who am I to judge? You know, I am um, a Sufi Muslim girl living in the West. I just look at who's happy. They're much happier than the ones who are being used by a sperm toilet, by their boyfriend who... Uh, splits the bills and then argues with them and they're always fighting and some of them actually get married but you know I'm not here to judge people for that's why I'm the devil's dating coach you know it's not something I would do personally but if that's what you want to do and if you're willing to pay me to show you how to dress for success in sugar dating I will dress you for success in sugar dating although Personally, I wouldn't think this is the path to happiness myself. I wouldn't do that. And so when you're if that's what they want. When you're providing dating coach um coaching to people, how do you tell females to dress? So I ask them who is their target? It's just like marketing, right? Who's their target audience, right? I also help them with the color season. Who do you want to dress for? And when people spend substantial amount of money, they typically don't want to dress for that broke uh, student who works part-time at Starbucks and is a musician. For that, I would say dress like a hipster. So I just teach women how to dress, what suits their body type, what suits where they're going, where they're meeting people. I suggest that women become cultured, get involved in the community, helping the arts, for example, this sort of a thing. And so to dress, you know, in quality clothes with dignity, I, I think with dignity and a bit of fun to not forget your personality, but at the same time, be respectful of where you're going. 
and think strategically. Dress for success to get what you want rather than dress to express. Do this on your own free time. Sounds like your values uh, and your attitudes are extremely traditional and uh, and conservative or old fashioned. Do you get blowback from people criticizing you in that regard? Well, you know, I I do, but at the same time, I I, I do support people who have non traditional values as long as you expect the consequences. If you expect him to be split the bills, do not expect a wedding ring. Then I support you fully. You know, I just am against people being irrational. I actually get quite a bit of blowback, oddly enough, from sugar girls who are dating and uh, they they want something impossible. And I tell them, no, you know, if you are, you know, doing something crazy, if you also very few of them get married too. And I explained that's a consequence. No, he'll marry me. You know, he'll dump his wife for me. I said, this is irrational. Right? This is a controversial lifestyle. You're not likely to get married to him. Just accept that and I'll help you dress for it. No! Where? Where? You know, he'll leave his wife for his mistress. No, he won't. And I got attacked yesterday over that. That, oh, and, and I said, you know, if you're too transactional, men fall in love with a woman's innocence. What value do you bring to the table? Nothing at all. You know, and it's people who are irrational love to attack me. <laughs> and it's, I just think we all have consequences for our decisions. Marie, if people want to uh, reach out to you and uh, get some of the, the devil's coach coaching, um, how do they do that? So on Instagram, I am Maria Almasani, and I'm also on YouTube at Maria Almasani Royal House. Royal? Royal House, because that's the, I also do, it also talks about my couture and color consultation. So I help women dress to achieve their goals, but I also help them be rational about their expectations because you cannot get a bodybuilder by being an elephant. And that is one of the many things that makes me the devil. You can't get a bodybuilder by being an elephant. Yeah, no, you have to be at the level of who you want. You have to be there equal, but reciprocal equal. You have to give the other person as much value as they give you. And otherwise, you'll resent each other. So that's the cornerstone. So it sounds like you think both for males and for females, we've got to be fit, we've got to be well-dressed, we've got to be well-mannered. Um, and the man has to be masculine and the female has to be feminine. Well, if you want a good uh, life in the bedroom, sure. But not everyone wants that. For some, like Hillary Clinton, being a high-powered career woman was much more important. And if that's more important for you or being feminine as a man, let your wife cheat if you're a feminine, fe like if you're Justin Trudeau, you know, if he wanted the marriage to be together, he should let it be an open marriage if he wants to be a male feminist. Nothing wrong with that. I'm not against open marriage. I'm just, which makes me not conservative either. Because they're, oh, you're against open marriage. I'm just for being rational. You know, if it's like in business. If you want something, find what it takes and go for it. Do not say, I want to build a million dollar company, but I am not going to move my butt. I'm just going to sit there in my yoga pants and manifest and manifest. Oh, where is my billion dollar company? No, you, you, people have to be rational. And I think in this day and age of unenlightenment and unreason, that makes me controversial. Sure does. <laughs> but Maria Almasani, it's been fun chatting with you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Have a lovely day. That's our show for today. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. And uh, Maria Almasani, you know what? Controversial, um, provocative, and I disagree with some of what you say, but some of what you say, actually a lot of what you say makes a lot of sense. And, um, and so it's worth thinking about. Thanks, everybody. Good night. 
Welcome back. Uh, I've got a last couple of minutes uh, with Maria Almasani, the the devil's dating coach, uh, the dating coach that uh, that uh, we've been chatting with for the last uh, little while. Um, Maria, how do we make it personal for a second? So I'm recently divorced. I'm single. What should I be doing? So I think you should go for what do you really want? Ask yourself, what do you really want? Do you want a career woman? Well, Hillary Clinton is single. You should slide into her DMs and ask her if you want to be more than friends. I'm sure she'd be delighted. Or think, you know, I want someone who's not as argumentative, who thinks it's important to be pleasant. Well, then that would be a traditional relationship where you would provide then go for someone traditional. So you have to know what you're looking for. And you can't have both. You can't have the career woman who's also feminine and not argumentative. You know, they end up resenting and divorcing their man. I mean, you that's really the problem is that they get tired because femininity takes time, you know, to do your hair, to do your nails, to see your therapist. You're not feminine if you're if you're not seeing a therapist because you need to manage your emotions, to all of this because we you know, you do so many things, your nails and then it becomes not 50-50 because you're doing all of this on top, you know? You're doing all this extra. So it's not really 50-50. It might be 70-30, it might be 60-40, and then they start resenting their men, and then they start divorcing them. So, you know, if you get someone who is a career woman, do not ask her to wax or shave or anything. Let her be a, a Harrietty woolly mammoth, if you will. Just let her be. And then she will love you for it because it's social contract that's truly equal. If she does not have to be pleasant, not have to spend time on manicures, not aging and all these things, can eat what she wants, does not diet. You know, Lizzo, for example, right? She doesn't have to be pleasant or diet. Someone like that, if would be perfectly happy in an egalitarian relationship. But if you want someone who does feminine labor on top, then you know you have to reciprocate with masculine labor. It's all about reciprocity. And the masculine labor is what? So it's, for example, taking her out, giving her flowers, paying her bills. Um, so like, for example, if a lady is feminine, you know, in the beginning, it's courtship. But if you get married, you should pay for her manicures, etc. So if she's not feminine, well, she's not doing manicures. You're splitting the bill 50-50. So it all depends because many feminine women who are career women, they think that it will work 50-50. And then over the years, they end up resenting that it's 60-40, right? Because of hair and makeup. And with children, children are 25 five jobs right and most of it the lion's share would be the woman taking care of the kids so women end up doing more in a 50 50 relationship so over time that marriage would fizzle therefore you know maybe you instead of having a crazy career woman if having a woman with a job is important maybe someone with a nine to five that she, you know, you might split some things, but you pay for her nails, or you pay for her hair salon, whatever it is, beauty treatments. So you just, and take her out and get her flowers. But so it depends on what you're looking for, right? I mean, femininity is not free in the long term because they get very resentful. So you just have to know what you're looking for and go for it. It, it sounds very transactional in your uh, definition. Well, precisely, but isn't all dating transactional? Men just use women for the bathroom these days in the West with the sexual revolution, and women get the short end of the stick and women are tired. You um, have said that women are looking for um, three things, and you've repeated a couple times uh, in, uh, in a masculine male. What are they? So um, they want someone who provides, protects, and cherishes. Also, the fourth is commits. Provide, protects, cherishes, and commits. You think that's right. what that you think that's what women really want? 
that's what women respond to. I'm not saying what women really want. I'm saying that's what women respond to, that they don't divorce and they're happy in the marriage. Very traditional point of view. Um, can, a, can a relationship uh, be successful where the female makes more money and is more successful than the male? Well, just go to scientific studies. That's where you have the most intimate partner violence. Um, a lot of men become jealous. There is mate guarding behavior. So, I mean, of course it can happen, but the rates of women being abused is the highest. So for women, I would not recommend it um, unless you want to end up in a women's shelter because that's what the data shows. Really? Yes, sadly. I mean, you keep saying I'm traditional. I'm just following the science here. You know, I'm not making things up. It's biology. And, and, you know, if you and, want to go against biology, well, by all means. Except and a biology. relationship when the man is older and the female is younger can work, but can the reverse work? Well, it depends. It depends. So if it, I've seen the reverse work as well, but if the woman has good plastic surgery, takes care of herself, et cetera, and he's the provider, I have seen it work. But, you know, not with a big age gap like Demi Moore and Ashton Kutcher, but where the woman is very feminine and looks young for her age, it can work. But again, it's all about accepting nature, reading the scientific studies, and not pretending that you're going to colonize nature like the West colonized the Middle East and Africa. I mean, you know, nature is not Iraq that you can just bomb. Nature is stronger than us. Provide, protect, cherish, commit. and commit. Yes. Hmm. Pretty traditional. Sounds interesting. And that's what women may not want, but that's what they respond to, according to our devil's dating coach, uh, Maria Elmasani. Thanks again for joining us. That's our show for tonight, everybody. Have a fun weekend. <laughs>